Okay, today we are in section 4.3, solving two-step equations. Um, in sections 4.1 and 4.2, we learned how to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to uh, solve equations. And we're trying to get the variable by itself on one side of the equation, and that's a lot of what we're doing today also. We're just basically taking those concepts and we're going to see them kind of merge together into one equation now. And uh, one of the first concepts you need to know, all right, is this statement. Basically, uh, it says when solving two-step equations, you move the term that is not connected to the variable first. And I've given you a sample equation, so you need to write this equation down in your notes. Uh, 2x plus 4 equals 12. All right, and you can see here that you now have multiple terms on the side of the equation with the variable. All right, so here's what my rule says. I need to move the term that's not connected to the variable first. All right, I have two x over there, but I need to first move what's not connected to the variable. All right, so because it's a positive four, I'm still using my inverse operations to cancel it out to the other side. So I subtract four from both sides to get two x, now equals eight, all right? Because my four canceled out on that side, all I'm left now uh, with now is my two x, and I bring that down, and I rewrite my equation, all right? So now I just look at, okay, what connection is now connected to my variable? And that's multiplication. So I need to do, again, inverse operations and divide both sides by two, and I get to my answer, x equals four. All right, and we check it the same way that we checked one step equations. So your homework tonight is still going to say to check the solution. So you take your value for x and you plug it back into the original equation. Is it true that two times four plus four equals 12? And this is a part where you don't have to show any work. All I wanna see is your substitution back into the original equation. And then I wanna see that your solutions check out to be the same value. 12 equals 12, and it checks out, all right? So again, on your homework, I wanna see a boxed answer and a boxed checked answer, and then we're good. All right, so this really in a nutshell is what we're learning today. And then of course, you know, just like with any other lesson that we've had, we're gonna have decimals and fractions, and, um, and we just, again, stick with our basics, and that is inverse operations. All right, so in example one, and guys, this is just a lot of practice. So, um, you know, we'll uh, be kind of like pausing uh, in between so you can work some of these problems. Um, but I want you to first write down uh, these two equations, negative 2x plus 12 equals 4, and 9 equals 3x minus 12. All right, so just take a minute to write that down. And let's start off first with the first equation, negative 2x plus 12 equals 4. And again, I want to focus on the term that is not connected to my variable, and that's positive 12. Well, how do I get that to cancel? I subtract by 12. Subtract by 12 on both sides. And don't be intimidated by the fact that sometimes when you do this subtraction, it might end up being a negative, and that's okay. So I bring down now, my 12's canceled, I bring down my negative 2x equals, and 4 minus 12, you can use your calculators to double check these, but it's gonna be negative eight. And now I need to do my second step, that's why we call these two-step equations, because step one is to add or subtract to move what's not connected to the other side, and step two now is to either multiply or divide to get the x by itself. So I'm going to now divide both sides because multiplication is connected to my variable. I now do inverse operations and I divide both sides by negative two, all right? Use my rules for division, negative eight divided by negative two is a positive four. And again, we're gonna check the same way, okay? So um, we plug it back into the original, all right? And negative two times positive four plus 12 equals four. I want you to take a minute, plug that into your calculator, 
and see if your answer checks out. So we'll pause for a second and let you check it. And when you multiplied negative two times four, you got negative eight plus 12 is in fact four, all right? So the great thing about these concepts and for your quiz and your test is you really can be sure that your answer is correct because you have the option to check. All right, now let's look at the second equation. Well, you should notice something about the second equation and that is that it's written kind of backwards. And we've talked about this in previous sections. Uh, my variable is on the right side of the equation. That's okay. You don't necessarily have to rewrite it or flip it around, but you do always need to focus, no matter which side of the equal sign it's on, you need to focus on the side with the variable because after all, getting the variable by itself is your main goal. So again, I just follow my steps. Which term do you think you're gonna move first? Would it be the three X or the negative 12? All right, so hopefully you're thinking, I move the negative 12 first. Well, how could I get negative 12 to cancel? What is the inverse or the opposite? And that would be to add 12 to both sides. All right, so now my 12s cancel and I bring down what's left, just the three X. All right, I'm one step closer to getting the X by itself. Now what's nine plus 12? All right, hopefully you're saying 21, okay? And again, multiplication is connected, so I need to divide both sides by three to get the X by itself. And notice that I kind of switched it around at the end and said X equals seven. X equals seven and seven equals X, it's the exact same thing and you can write it either way. Either way is fine. And again, checking guys, all right? So what I wanna do now is I wanna pause and I want you to do the checking all by yourself. All right, so you should have plugged in the seven. All right, so nine equals three times seven minus 12. And we do know that 21 minus 12 is nine, so it checks out. Again, you don't have to show your steps for checking, I just wanna see the substitution and then the box to answer. Okay, so that's example one. Um, in example two, what do you see a ton of? <laughs> Okay, and you should definitely be saying fractions. I see a lot of fractions. And uh, when we have fractions here, we have one of two choices. Okay, we can find the LCD um, and uh, work with the LCD, or we can use a method called clearing fractions. All right, so um, I did have a little typo, so you probably are seeing now that I just changed the first equation. Um, so I need you to write this equation down. I apologize if you started uh, writing it already, but I need you to go ahead and write this new equation. And notice that there was no variable in there. My first fraction was wrong. All right, so x over eight minus one half equals negative seven over two. And what you notice about these equations is there's not just one fraction, there's multiple fractions. And so instead of going through the hassle of finding your LCD and still having to deal with fractions, what we're going to do is we are still going to find the LCD, meaning the smallest number that all of my denominators can go into. And we're gonna you know, keep this relatively simple, so don't worry about your LCD being some huge number. All right, but here's what we do. We choose the largest of the fractions Okay, and we see, okay, it's ideal if the other fractions are also, you know, can be um, our factors of that number. And in this case, it is. So my LCD would be 8. But if it's not, then I would just go up to the next multiple of 8, 16, and I would keep going up until I found an LCD. All right, and we'll do more of that in the second one that we're solving. So for this one, 8 is my LCD, so I'm going to multiply each fraction in my equation by eight. All right, so I multiply the first fraction by eight, I multiply negative one half by eight, and negative seven over two by eight. Again, I find my LCD, and I multiply each term in the equation by that number. 
All right, so on the first one, my eights cross reduced to a one, and all I have left is a six. On the second one, and again, guys, you can use your calculators. It's totally fine. But negative one half times eight would be negative four, and negative seven over two times eight would be negative 28. Okay, and now I'm back to uh, really, in this case, it's just a one-step equation, all right, where, again, I'm just solving for x now, so I need to add 4 to both sides, and x equals negative 24. And again, guys, it's the same thing over again. You can substitute it back into the original problem, and you have negative 24 over 8 minus 1 half should equal negative seven over two. All right, so take a minute to work that out and see if it equals. And when you put that in your calculator, it's always nice when that works out. Negative seven over two does equal negative seven over two. So I know for sure that my answer is correct. All right, checks out. All right, let's look at the second one. Okay, I want you to take a minute to write down the equation and try to figure out what your LCD is. Again, we do this by listing the multiples of the largest denominator. Okay, so six is our denominator. Okay, that's the largest. Well, do all the numbers go into six? Well, two does, but four does not. So six is not my LCD. So now I have to go to my next multiple of six, which is 12. Does four go into 12? Yes, six goes into 12 and so does two. So now I've found my LCD and I'm going to multiply each term in the equation by 12. Guys, and make sure this subtraction sign doesn't get lost, okay? That belongs with 5, 6. That's the sign in front of the fraction. All right, so 4 and 12 cancel out, but I have a 3 left. So 3 times A gives me 3A. All right, 6 and 12 reduces to 2. And again, guys, you can use your calculators and just multiply negative 5 over 6 times 12. But if we're doing it by hand, that would equal negative 10. All right, equals 2 and 12 cross reduced to a 6, and 1 times 6 is 6. And now I'm ready to solve my two-step equation. I first must move the number that is not connected. Okay, add 10, and 3a equals 16. Divide both sides by uh, 3. Okay, and 16 divided by 3 uh, does give me a repeating decimal, and that's okay. All right, A equals 5.3 repeating. So if you end up with a repeating decimal in your answer, it's okay. Sometimes it just works out that way. Uh, when you plug it back into check, you could just put in 5.333, you know, a couple times. And again, you're just plugging it back in. 5.3 repeating divided by... Uh, 4 minus 5 sixths uh, equals 1 half. And now let's check. So because of the repeating decimal, I got like 0 0.49 in some decimals. All right, and that's because of the repeating decimal, but I know that that is really, really, really close to 1 half. All right, so those repeating decimals, sometimes your checked answer won't work out to be exact, all right? Again, because the three goes on to infinity, but that's about as close as you can get, all right? So that's, that's still okay. I know that my answer is correct. All right, so we've got a challenge question, and here we see our old friend, the distributive property, okay? So take a minute to write down this equation, negative one-third times four plus z equals negative five over six. All right, so negative one-third uh, times four, I just need to distribute, um, gives me negative four-thirds minus one-third times z is one-third z, and that equals negative five over six. And when I say this is a challenge question, uh, this is 
definitely going to be the type of question that I would like to, you know, throw out there as like an extra credit type of problem. But again, we're just kind of merging distributed property in with, um, you know, the concepts that we're learning. All right. So again, I see a lot of fractions. So what do you think you're going to do to get rid of these fractions? We learned this in the last example. All right. If you said multiply everything by six, you're exactly right. Okay, so I need to multiply negative four-thirds times six, negative one-third z times six, and negative five-six times six. And when I do that, again, um, all I'm doing is just multiplying them out. I get negative eight, all right, negative two z, and negative five. Again, just multiplying each fraction times six, and you can use your calculators to check. Add eight to both sides. This is not going to work out to be a whole number, but that's okay. Equals three. All right, and at this point, hopefully you're getting in the habit where you can automatically see that I'm dividing both sides by negative two, and z is gonna be one and a half. All right, so that's about as challenging as it's gonna get for you. All right, um, but that's where we see some of that distributor property and clearing fractions. Okay, example three. We are almost done, hang in there. Okay, we see, um, we see two equations here. And I want you to write down these equations and see what you notice, all right? So just kind of think to yourselves as you're writing down these equations and um, see what you uh, notice about them that might be a little different. All right, so what you should have noticed um, is that you have actually like terms, all right? Three min three y minus eight y well, those are like terms. Those absolutely can be combined. So what you're seeing now is, um, you know, that you can combine 3y minus 8y to make negative 5y. You always want to look for anything that you could combine before you start moving your numbers to the other side of the equation. So now that I've combined it, now instead of having to take multiple steps to solve, now I'm just going to divide both sides by negative five. Guys, I run into this problem quite often where people see that negative five and they think to add five. The reason I don't add is because there's a multiplication connected to my variable. So if there's multiplication connected, that means I must divide to solve. Y equals negative five. All right, and you would check the same way. Okay, and the last one, all right, as you're writing this down, I want you to look for some terms that you could possibly combine. Okay, so you should have seen four plus two y plus three. Four plus three can give you seven plus two y equals negative nine. All right, and then you subtract seven from both sides and two y equals negative 16. Divide both sides by two, and y equals negative eight. All right, and again, you would check the same way. All right, so that's just something that you wanna look for. Um, looking at your homework, uh, let's see. Um, I don't see a lot of that until you get to the back. And it looks like numbers 34 and 36, you'll see some combining like terms. All right, um, so now let's uh, kind of skip ahead to example four. Okay, so example four, modeling real life. All right, we see a word problem here. So let's just read this together, okay? It says you install 500 feet of invisible fencing along the perimeter of a rectangular yard. The width is 100 feet, what is the length? All right, so we've looked at similar problems um, actually in chapter three, uh, where we have to use a formula, you know, we have to know the formula. So what do you think? Is it gonna be perimeter or area based on the information here? All right, you should have said perimeter. P equals 
2 times the length plus 2 times the width, all right? And now you have to figure out where these values are plugged in and what you would need to solve for. Well, 500 is the full perimeter. It says it's the perimeter. And we know that 100 is the width, but I don't know the length plus 2 times 100. All right, do we know 2 times 100? Could we go ahead and just solve that part? Yeah, 2 times 100 is 200. All right, so that's where we get the 200. And now I'm just going to solve this like a two-step equation. I'm going to subtract 200 from both sides to get 300 equals 2L. Divide both sides by 2. And the length is 150 feet. Okay, so again, using our formulas to solve for uh, the unknown side. All right, um, if you understand that, I believe that's everything you need to know for section 4.3.